Hello, Mr. B here. This is a uh, pre-lab on the PV92. Uh, and I'm going to use BioRad's um, PowerPoint, which I modified significantly. And uh, so we're going to be doing the PCRs again. And here's an overview. Day one, we're not going to use hair follicles. We could, but that um, involves some proteases that I don't have, and I understand it's a lot more difficult to get good um, results using the hair follicle. So, been doing this the last couple of years, works out quite well. We're going to get cheek samples, and so what you'll do is you'll take some salty water, and you're going to swish, 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 and put it in. And this is kind of a short and sweet version here, and going to put it in a little sample. We're going to heat it up a couple different steps and do some centrifuging. And then we'll have some DNA. So more detailed. Um, well, actually, sorry. Day two is going to be picking up where we basically did the um, PV92. Day one is essentially making our DNA template. And then day two and day three would be like what we did for the, the CSI, the crime scene investigation, um, where we're doing the, doing the uh, PCRs and then the last day doing um, gels. So we'll be doing, obviously, this on Tuesday. Um, and there'll be a lot of downtime, and um, it won't go the whole block. So then, uh, the other part of the day, we'll be working on either wrapping up the CSI lab or working on day two of the um, the uh, rapid pathogen outbreak. And then, uh, so this will be Thursday, and then we'll come back on Monday and then run the gels. And hopefully, now that you guys are going to be good at this, and there's not going to be a a ton of samples to run we probably will be able to do the fast blast so we'll be able to run the gels and do the staining um, so we don't have to do an overnight staining and do it in about 20 minutes and so you can get instant results so we'll, we'll give that a shot uh, so that'll be next Monday when we do our gels um, so here's just a quick overview you're gonna have a copy of this but I just want to make sure that I go through this with you so we don't get any mess ups because you can definitely mess this up I haven't had anyone mess it up, but um, this year we have been having some people struggling on occasion with a couple um, instructions, so I just want to make sure I hit the highlights. You're going to have two um, containers, and by the way, everybody's testing your own DNA. Sweet! So um, you're all going to be working on your own on this, okay? So you're going to have one tube with a screw cap. It's physically going to screw on there. You know, these are called micro test tubes, what we've been using, those colorful little tubes that have a little cap that flips over. Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to label these guys. You're going to label both of those, okay? Label them with your initials. And um, and this one here says label screw cap tube. So label both of them, boom. And then you're going to get a cup of saline, swishy, 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 swish, and what it says in the directions, and then you're going to spit it back into this little cup. And then you're going to take one mil of this uh, swishy, swishy, swish stuff. It's going to have some um, cheek cells in there. You won't be able to really see them that well. But you'll put them in the screw, um, not the screw cap, the uh, micro test tube. And we're going to centrifuge them. So we'll have all three centrifuges going. And you'll do that for two minutes. And what you're looking for is a match head size pellet of whitish cells at the bottom. That would be your cheek cells. If you don't see that, well, if you don't see that at all, then what you want to do is uh, pour out the supernatant, which would be the liquid, and put another mill of saline in there. If you have a really big mother, maybe, you know, for whatever reason, you get uh, a lot of cheek cells, you don't want too much, you don't want too little. Match head size um, pellet is, is what we're looking for, right? And uh, so after you pelleted your cells, you, you, you know, if you say you got that match head size of pellet, you now can get rid of the saline because we don't want that. What we want is that little pellet that's going to have your cheek cells, but it's also going to have other stuff that we don't want. Um, and so it, what we'll do from there is we're going to resuspend. Uh, see, it doesn't say to put it in. Okay. Resuspend by pellet, the pellet by vortex flicking the tube so no clumps of cells remain. So, I don't know if it's, you don't have any liquid in there while that's going to work. I think this is kind of a little wacky. You're going to put, um, transfer all your resuspended cells. After pelleting your cells, pour up the sand. Being careful not to lose your pellet, blot your tube briefly. Okay. Resuspend the pellet by vortex and flicking the tubes. 
for right now, I'm going through this. This isn't making sense to me. We'll, we'll make sure we talk about that in class tomorrow. But um, what you're going to do is you're going to take um, a micro pipette and you're going to, at 20 microliters, you're going to take some of these cells. I guess they'll break up. They must break up a little bit. But um, you're going to take 20 microliters of your cells and you're going to put it in that screw cap. That's going to have this stuff called Instagene. Um, so they call it right there. What that does is that's a, a little resin. And it's a cation exchange resin. And what it's going to do is take magnesium. Remember, magnesium has a plus plus. So um, that's what that's going to do. It's going to tie up magnesium. And why that's important, I'll show you in a second. And then we're going to um, put the cap back on and we're going to vortex. And this is really important that you do that shaking and vortex. You know, have the vortex where you can flick, 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 flick. But you want to make sure you really do this a good, good job with that. Again, we don't want the, the cells all clumped up. Um, and by the way, what you will find is that this this uh, pellet here will break up quite easily. So when you pour off, you need to be careful. It's a little delicate. Um, so what you'll do is you'll collect a whole bunch of samples, and you'll be working on a little bit of a team. I'll tell you about that tomorrow. It's not a big deal. It's just you know you, people are going to be working on a, on a given um, gel. Okay, so you'll be breaking up the teams by the gel. Um, so what you'll do is you're going to incubate that uh, that little screw cap tube with the instagene, um, the is it instagene? Yeah, the instagene matrix is what they call it uh, for 56 degrees, and you can do that for 10 minutes. So then you obviously have downtime. You go work on other stuff. What the 56 degrees does is it breaks up the connective tissue and it inactivates DNAs. What are DNAs? DNAs are enzymes that break down DNA. And obviously our goal is to get your DNA. So we want to inactivate the DNAs. And we've also done something else with the um, with the matrix. That matrix, this guy here, the instagene matrix, that also does some stuff to prevent um, DNA from being broken down. I'll show you that on the next slide. Uh, so after it's been sitting in a nice little hot tub action, we're going to remove the tubes. We're going to shake them, shake, 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 shake. Well, you can vortex too. And then you're going to put it in really, really hot water for 100 degrees. What that's going to do with boiling water, what that's going to do is it's going to shrink up those little um, floats, but it's what happens, and then we throw them out. But I have plenty, that's, that's for sure. Um, what it's also going to do is it's going to lyse the cell. So we don't have to use an enzyme in this case. We're going to use heat to lyse the cell. And also it's going to denature proteins, which means you're going to break proteins down into, um, you know, just really simple, you know, the basically, not even amino acids. You're going to break it down. And, well, I guess amino acids would be one way of saying it. So you're going to break down the proteins, all right? And uh, from there, what we're going to do is remove the tubes from boiling water, pellet the matrix, and then we're going to store it in the fridge. All right. So that's going to be day one. Um, now, what are we doing with this instagene? Okay, the instagene, this would be representing a cell wall here. And you've got the nuclear membrane as well, where we've got our DNA. And um, in your cell is magnesium. Okay. Now, magnesium is a cofactor um, that... Uh, will be utilized to break down DNA. So if you know you had if you had a cell that died, magnesium would be one of those cofactors. What a cofactor is is something that an enzyme needs. So if we have enzymes that break down DNA, which we're going to be doing by heating up, we're going to heat this stuff up so we can break down uh, you know the nuclear membrane but also the cell wall. If we're doing that, the, basically the this cell is going to be thinking, hey, I'm dying. I need my enzymes to do their thing, which is break down DNA. So to trick them out, the instagene matrix is going to take, um, it's going to attract the magnesium out. So you remove a cofactor, which is good. And, um, and you know, we've got the 100 degrees, which is going to disrupt or, you know, break up, lice the membrane. Okay, so... Um, so now the question is that the lab's called PV92, and, you know, um, what we're going to be doing, oh, by the way, from this point, once we have your DNA, then it's kind of like we're picking up where we left off with the um, CSI, All right? So then the question is, what's PV92? Okay, PV92, that is on the 16th chromosome, 
and what is called as an alu insertion. I'm going to be talking about this alu stuff for quite a bit. All right, so it's just basically a chunk of DNA um, that's in the 16th chromosome, and it's um, it's called an alu repeat family. That's found in a lot, a lot, a lot of spots um, throughout our DNA. And where that ALU name comes from is a restriction site. Somewhere in the middle, there's a restriction site, a restriction enzyme site, sorry. And that restriction enzyme that you use is called ALU1. Okay, and all of this is um, non-coding. It doesn't make any um, proteins, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, it's non-coding DNA, what we might call it junk DNA. And it's not diagnostic for any disease or disorder. Uh, evolutionary significance, uh, it's been inserted in the last million years, and the genotypes, here they are, plus, 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 minus, minus, minus. In case you kind of forgot what that means, don't worry, a couple slides, we'll show you. Um, what you can use as PV92 is it can tell you, help you uh, with some population genetics, a little with paternity analysis and forensics, but keep in mind, just we just talked about, um, if you're doing things like paternity or forensics, they're going to be testing um, 13, they'll be doing the, um, the 13 different uh, tests that we talked about in the previous lab because you want to have, um, you know, statistically significant um, forensics testing. So the PV92 is called dimorphic. Remember, I was talking about the plus, 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 minus, minus, minus. Okay, what does that mean? Okay, if you didn't have an insertion, say this was mom and dad, and both of them didn't have that insert, that alu, um, if it wasn't inserted, that would be a minus minus. If both mom and dad had the alu insert, which makes this chunk of DNA longer, if they both had it, that would be plus plus. Well, then there's, what if mom didn't have it and dad had it? Well, that would be a minus plus, or plus minus doesn't really matter. Um, Think about the implications when you run, if you were to run this DNA um, in gel electrophoresis, which goes faster, shorter or longer? The shorter goes faster, so what's going to happen is that's going to go cranking through the uh, gel quicker than the longer one, okay? So that's how, and it will be, I'll show you a picture of gel in a minute. Okay, so there's um, basically what we'll be testing is 641 base pairs and 941 base pairs. And this, these ALUs, as I uh, kind of alluded to, um, that happens in, in a lot of spots in our genome. Now, this is all our chromosomes, and this is from uh, Wiki. So if you type in ALU, um, you just type in ALU, I forget what I did, some of the ALU and something else after it, um, maybe ALU testing. Uh, uh, this is from Wikipedia, so you find this page, you find this visual. What this was was in Germany. These guys did some testing where they used some dyes that would um, make the alu repeat some green. So you'll see um, wherever you see green, that's where there's those alu repeats in that DNA, you know, in our chromosome. So you know you can see um, dip, some some have a lot of it, and um, so you you say, hey, well, you see a lot of it, and they call it a sign, a short inter inter interspersed repetitive element and another thing they've I've read and this is from this website right here which is pretty cool um, this gets in a little more detail than we need to worry about but it's called a, uh, the the um, alu is called a jumping gene transposable DNA sequence that reproduces by copying itself and inserting in a new chromosome locations um, you'd want to go to this site here and read about that and you'll see why I don't really go into much detail because it gets a little more complex than I need to worry about um, but this is from, uh, again, from the same site here, uh, roughly 1 million alu copies per haploid genome. So that's about 10% of our, of our genome. That's pretty significant, is this junk DNA that doesn't code for anything. Um, so here's what we're going to be doing in the lab. We're going to have a ladder. We're going to have a control where it's going to be just plus. We're going to have another control, which is just going to be minus. In other words, that alu isn't there, so it's going to go faster. We're going to have another control, which is going to be have both plus and minus. And then we're going to test each individual. 
And so what you might find is, you know, obviously this would be a minus, this would be a plus. What you might find is this right here, this light, light mark here. You know, you see some like here, I'm circling my mouse. Um, it's a little, little lighter. You'll find that one is definitely darker than another. And um, I, I don't, I can't explain why that is other, other than it might be just the quantity. Um, but that doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me either. But uh, we've seen this definitely in the lab. Um, if you're, I think it was Asian, you're more likely to be um, plus minus. So if memory serves, I could be wrong on that. But uh, you'll find that one of them is really light if you happen to be plus minus. And, um, and then obviously this person over here was minus as well. Uh, you could actually you might make the argument that maybe they were, well, no, nah, it's, it's a bit high. So anyhow, so that's the deal. You've got, um, you're, you're going to find if you're plus minus that a couple of your bands will be kind of light like that. All right. And so that's what we're going to be doing in the lab. And I'm going to stop there. There is a little bit more math, funky math stuff that you can do with this. Um, not sure. I haven't figured out whether I'm going to go over there or not. Uh, but I'm going to stop here. And thank you for watching this pre-lab. Have a good day.